All right, here we are at a 90-year-old um, home in Kent, Ohio, really close to the university. You can see this section here is the original home. Everything from here back is an add-on, and this addition has actually got a crawl space. It's an exposed crawl space, meaning dirt floor. All of the construction that's been done over the years, um, all the debris has ended up underneath this uh, part of the house. So the crawl space is, is nearly inaccessible. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, we just finished installing a heat recovery ventilator, which is a system that effectively exchanges the air from the inside of the home with the outside of the home without a huge amount of an energy loss. They're about 75% efficient. Um, and what we ended up doing is installing a custom um, hood into each of these basement windows. Here you'll notice we have air coming out and this is actually drawing air in. And I'll show you inside why that is and we'll go from there. Okay, here we are in the basement of the home. I'm going to show you real quick in one of these crawl spaces. You know, this is what we're dealing with as far as the crawl space goes. Tons of debris. No way to really do a good sub-slab depressurization system or crawl space, crawl space depressurization system because we can't really um, seal things up airtight with all this debris. The homeowner um, didn't think it was very cost effective to remove all of this stuff. So we go with our next best option, which is actually a great option, which is, like we mentioned earlier, the heat recovery ventilator. HRV, some people um, see things about ERVs, energy recovery ventilators. Those are more popular in warmer climates, but the same same concept applies. So effectively what's happening, this piece of ductwork we have running into that crawl space. It's drawing air out of that crawl space. That crawl space is likely the number one culprit of the uh, of the high radon readings here. So it's pulling that air out. Comes in here, there's a coil inside of here, similar to a, an air conditioning coil. Comes down in here, out this pipe, and out of the home where we saw it. Here we're drawing in fresh air. That fresh air comes in here and is blown out here. Now it's a straight shot from here to here and a straight shot from there to there. However, this unique coil actually allows both of the air streams to um, absorb the energy from the other. So effectively, let's say it's the middle of the winter and we're drawing in 40 degree, 30 degree air from outside. We don't want 40 degree air coming out of out of here. So the hot air that we're sucking out from inside the house crosses paths right about here with that cold air and it warms it up uh, warms it up a little bit so instead of bringing in 40 degree air then maybe we're bringing in 60 degree air because the 75 degree air that we've sucked out of here has warmed it up and has gone out. Um, so that's the basic concept you can um, read a little bit more about them on uh, online if you're really interested but uh, they're very very handy in situations like this where you have a, a practically inaccessible crawl space um, we've got some old original stone um, exposed stone walls which could be contributing um, a lot of different things going on in this house a lot of revisions you know it's it's a nice house upstairs there's nothing wrong with it this is what you find in older homes but it just makes it challenging to do a traditional mitigation system so this is the next best, best option and, and the great thing about this once these are balanced we do have to balance the amount of air coming in and coming out um, they can actually do a, a, a great deal of um, of good as far as um, air quality um, the way that we size this system it should be replacing all of the air in the home um, about uh, once every three hours uh, which is excellent. Uh, we're going to find out what the test is. The test results are in a couple days. I'll, I'll let you know what that is. Uh, the pre-mitigation test was very close to 10 picocuries per liter. Um, our goal is to get that under four and, and obviously lower if we can. We'll see what happens. Um, one other thing I didn't point out here, we've got this this condensation line. You know, you might notice that it, that it goes down and then goes up a little bit. That's intentional. It effectively acts as a little bit of a trap. Although in this situation, it's emptying into a sump pump behind the wall. Um, so a trap isn't entirely necessary unless it's draining into a normal, um, into a normal pipe. Um, and the reason we have this condensation line is in, in the winter you're, you're drawing in cold air, you're drawing, a, drawing in some moisture. Um, eventually some ice is going to form on these coils and when that ice forms um, the machine is uh, it's pretty smart. There's a control, computer control board inside of this section here. Um, it'll shut down the intake, it'll increase the outflow of warm air to thaw it out, it'll drain out, and then it'll start running again for about 20 minutes, and it continues this process until 
um, the outdoor air is above 32 degrees. Um, and it, it'll, it'll make the adjustments necessary in order to keep the airflow as, as much as, as, as possible while um, not freezing the unit up. You also notice here on this control panel, we have a handful of, um, of different jumpers and options here. You see we have a jumper here on the dehumidifier um, terminals. That actually allows us to run this thing on high speed at all times because our goal is not just air exchanges, but uh, to, to reduce the radon levels in the house for the seller. Um, but there are a lot of other options here. Timers, you can tie it in with the furnace. You know, a lot of these, you know, here we're, we're just blowing into this into this basement um, um, as it is. And the reason we're doing that is we want as little restriction coming in as possible and a little bit more restriction going out because we want more air coming in than we want going out. Effectively, what that does is it pressurizes the basement. You know, we're blowing a certain amount of air into this basement. We're taking a certain amount out, amount out. But if we're putting in more than we take out, pressure increases, it becomes pressurized, and effectively what it does is this radon that's seeping up through the ground, through the crawl space, through these walls, is forced out. If, we're, if we reverse that accidentally and we're sucking more air out than we're blowing in, it's going to be drawing air from everywhere, including the areas where it's, where it's um, you know, emanating from. So you'd actually make the situation worse. You'd effectively be mining radon if you did that. So you have to be careful, make sure these systems are balanced. It's not something that you should do if, uh, if you don't know what you're doing. Um, but when properly installed and cared for, they can uh, they can make a very challenging project like we saw in there uh, a lot more manageable. So if you have any questions, you can get us uh, at 330-267-9550. You can also visit us on the web, www.akronradon.com.